Hello and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. President Salah Zode called for a unified effort to uphold national dignity and patriotism in the community. This remark came today when the president addressed the congregation at the headquarters of House of People's Representatives gathered to celebrate the 14th National Flag Day. Participants of the event also expressed the need to strengthen national unity and respect the national flag. Alula Taklamariam reports. Ethiopia's National Flag Day is celebrated on the first week of October every year. It now turns 14 years since the Flag Day has been officially marked as a national celebration. The 14th National Flag Day has been observed in different parts of the country as well as in Ethiopian embassies abroad. Speaking on the occasion held at the headquarters of the House of Papers Representatives of Ethiopia, President Salor Xodi said Ethiopia's flag symbolizes the heroism of Ethiopian ancestors who had sacrificed their lives to safeguard the country's sovereignty. Sandak Alamachin, Bautuluduch Maswatinat, Yastabak Noinet and Natachin Milikutna. Our flag is the symbol of our freedom ensured by the life sacrifices of Ethiopians in different times. Our flag is the symbol of our common identity, common emblem, and an icon of our strong unity like other countries, which ensuring their freedom. This is an opportunity to value our heroes who had sacrificed their lives and preserved the sovereignty of Ethiopia. We should also use this event to make another history that can help prosper the nation in a new chapter and help. At the global level or in sport competitions, we Ethiopians are not only identified by our names, but also by the green, yellow and red colors of our flag. A flag holds people's equality and hope. So this generation had the mandate to preserve and maintain all the values of the national flag. Meanwhile, legal expert Zelekat Meskin explained the objective of having similar event. He said the flag symbolizes Ethiopia's unity and their quest for national pride. Uh, the reason why we're celebrating the Ethiopian uh, flag day is that because uh, it shows that it shows clearly the price that our fathers have has actually like paid for in order to maintain the unity and the, uh, also the, the prosperity of this country. So it clearly shows that uh, our fathers uh, have paid the ultimate price in order to actually maintain the unity of this country. Uh, aside from that one, it also shows that it, it, it conveys a message to, to the current generation uh, of Ethiopia to also uh, continue uh, the process that uh, our fathers have, uh, have started. The Lega Feather urged the young in particular to be inspired by their forefathers' sense of patriotism. Well, for the youth, the message that I want to convey is that uh, our fathers, as I mentioned earlier, they, they paid like a lot of prices. So the flag that we are celebrating today, it, it didn't actually like, you know, come like, you know, suddenly. It, it, it came actually through, through a lot of processes, through ups and downs. So they, they paid like, in a lot of prices, so the current youth also should understand the symbol, the meaning and the value of this, this flag, and then should also work in order to uh, actually continue, in order to uh, actually like, you know, persist and then continue for, for the unity of uh, Ethiopia. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, different schools and Ethiopian embassies abroad marked their day with various activities. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed called on his newly appointed government executives to look for opportunities within their respective institutions. The Premier also urges new government officials to fight corruption and serve the public with utmost responsibility. Demis Makrao has more. <laughs> Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed officially formed his new government and appointed his cabinet members and other senior government officials recently. In a training being delivered to the new senior officials, Prime Minister Abiy highlighted his government way so forward and urgent priorities. The Premier urges his executives to effectively serve the public with a greater commitment and fighting corruption. Sultan Attila Mamadou. Yehedal, Yegzegudainu. 
You must not strongly suggest yourself neither with authority nor with corruption. They are results of repetitive experience and grow to be a habit. We witnessed several talented individuals who stumbled across the way due to corrupting habits. Upon your appointment, MFs also alerted us that some corrupt cabinets are still within us. Thus, we have to fight corruption before it grows to be an addiction like cigarettes within ourselves. Prime Minister Abiy also called on his new government officials to turn the searchlight inward and look for potential opportunities within their respective institutions upon starting their career in the near future. You are not expected to achieve something non-existent, but you are only expected to deeply assess opportunities within your institution and turn it into greater opportunity. Far East countries say the time to prosper was either 30 years before or right today. We already missed the chance before 30 years, but the chance with today is still with us. So we have to properly use it and thereby need to ensure our own prosperity. The training being delivered to new government officials will extend for five days at the Africa Leadership Excellence Academy and is believed to synergize the newly appointed government executives and enhance their sense of responsibility ahead of their career. As long as Africa stands divided, it will always remain weak, with the risk of disintegration inviting eager colonizers back who have barely left the continent. This remark was made by Patrick Lumumba while lecturing Pan-Africanism to the newly appointed government executives at the African Leadership Excellence Academy. He has also used the occasion to urge Ethiopians to capitalize on their unique history of independence. Shivara Olako presents the following story. Professor Plo Lumumba is a professor of public law, a holder of an LLD Doctor of Laws. Professor Lumumba began his lecture congratulating the leaders of the new government of Ethiopia. As ministers in the new administration, congratulations. He then dwelt in length on the importance of African indispensable unity, without which weakness and disintegration will only be the fate of the continent. If we only see Pan-Africanism as sentimentalism, as a romantic idea about which we debate, and we remain as we are, then this is the Africa that I see. This is the Africa that I see in 25 years' time. Many Africans, either legally or otherwise, will break into different autonomous countries. Many of them will have more than 100 countries in Africa, each claiming self-determination, and is already beginning to happen. Because we will be looking at narrow ethnic agenda as the only way of defining our affairs. Ethiopia will break down, Kenya will break down, Nigeria will break down, South Africa will break down, and look at South Africa. Only last week, the whites in Western Cape in South Africa have delivered a petition to the government in Pretoria saying they want to create their own country. One aspect of this unity lies in the regional blocks of Africa that need to go pragmatic. He strongly argues that continental disunity will foster foreign meddling, citing the case of the Nile waters as a case in point. If we were working as a single unit, nobody can quarrel with the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Because if we acknowledge, as we do, that if Africa is to enjoy the dividends of the first industrial revolution, one of the things that we need is power. Then if 
the dam is going to generate anything in the neighborhood of 10,000 megawatts. This region should be celebrated because the entire East African region will need that power. But now, because we do not work as a single unit, there is an attempt by the outside world to externalize what are differences that can be resolved domestically. The United States of America thinks it has something to say. The United Nations thinks it has something to say. The weak African Union thinks that it has nothing to say. He has also used the occasion to urge Ethiopians to capitalize on their exceptional history of independence. And as Ethiopia, lastly, always remember this. You have a unique history of independence. You are one of the few African economies where you can actually say that possibly 75% of your economy is dominated by Ethiopians. Am I wrong in that regard? 75%. You come to Kenya. 56% of the Kenyan economy is dominated by Asians who are no more than 100,000. 65% of Ugandan economy is dominated by Asians. There are no more than 10,000 of them. 47% of Tanganyika, Tanzanian economy dominated by Asian. 50% of Malawi economy by Asian. 57% of uh, the economy of Zambia is dominated by Asians. You go to West Africa, is dominated by Lebanese. You are unique that you are controlling 75% of your economy, you have a market, a population of 120 million, how do you use it? You can be a gentle giant in the region, a gentle giant. Prolific writer Professor Lumumba is a staunch Pan-Africanist and has delivered several powerful speeches about African solutions to African problems. <laughs>
Welcome back. CNN wages war against Africa's most successful airliner, the Ethiopian Airlines, as the U.S. fails to intervene in Ethiopian affairs through the United Nations Security Council. Analysts say the U.S. Democrats are not trying to disrupt Ethiopian. They are well aware that Ethiopians had abstract thoughts and knowledge and present with thousands of years of literature, architecture, religion and music notes. Sintayo Tamrat has more. Ethiopians see the Ethiopian Airlines, the county's modern-day Lalibela and Aksum. They say Ethiopian is a modern-day Adwa, which proves they have an indomitable spirit. But today, this new spirit of Africa is facing a high level of malice from CNN. Holding discussion with ETV languages, aviation journalist Kale Jesus Bekele explains reasons behind CNN's recent report against Ethiopian Airlines. They wage a campaign against the airline because uh, everybody knows that, everyone knows that uh, uh, the national carrier uh, plays uh, a, a pivotal role in the economic, uh, in the socio economic development of the country. Uh, number one, uh, the airline employs 17,000 uh, employees, uh, but according to a recent IATA report, the airline has uh, created. 1.1 uh, million direct and indirect jobs in the country um, and the airline contributes about 5.7 percent to the country's GDP uh, and um, fits uh, more than 4 billion dollars uh, annual uh, revenue that's a foreign currency so whoever uh, wants to uh, weaken Ethiopia uh, or attack Ethiopia the airline would always uh, would be a target. The US government knows Ethiopia was made a landlocked country with the order of State Department is Herman Cohen in 1991 and Ethiopia has no access to the sea. And attacking the Ethiopian airlines is like taking the life-supporting oxygen to create a new level of humanitarian crisis once again to justify a humanitarian intervention. Alayesu says it is not a crime to transport guns on airlines because if necessary, the military can charter it. The airline has repeatedly refuted all allegations saying that it has not uh, transported military uh, hardware or troops to any part of the country. And it has not been asked by anyone to transport. But an airline, a commercial airline, uh, in an event of... Uh, a national emergency the military can charter a commercial airline a commercial aircraft jetliner uh, to transport troops and military hardware in case of emergency in, in the event of a national emergency when there is a national emergency the, the military can charter a passenger aircraft or a cargo aircraft a commercial uh, airline uh, to ferry military hardware or uh, uh, to transport troops. Uh, by the way, as we speak, this is not the first time when uh, a commercial airline actually, you know, uh, for instance, uh, as we speak now, Ethiopian Airlines is transporting UN peacekeeping mission from to Mali, West Africa. The recent CNN report on the Ethiopian airline is an ideal proof to the U.S. policy on Ethiopia. The report is a carefully invented story to destroy the reputation and goodwill of the company. It seems that there is a, a, a well-coordinated uh, campaign against Ethiopian Airlines uh, by various uh, media outlets. Ethiopian Airlines is a founding member of IATA, so it fully complies with IATA uh, regulations, uh, cargo regulations, for instance. Uh, and also Ethiopia as a country is a founding member of ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization. So again, uh, uh, Ethiopia complies with the ICAO uh, regulations. Uh, so, uh, All the US attempt to use UN Security Council to justify intervention failed due to lack of evidence. Now the gloves are taken off and the Democrats government will use everything possible to escalate the humanitarian crisis Still, the world has no option but to accept the Democrats' demand for humanitarian intervention. 
I am now joined by Dr. Ercido Lendebo over the phone for further discussion on CNN's targeting the Ethiopian Airlines. Welcome and thank you very much for your time, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. The CNN is continuing this information about Ethiopian Airlines. What do you think is the intention behind this attacks against Ethiopia and its airliner? I think it's very sad to, to, to see CNN to go down like this. And uh, I don't think this is the the stations in the stations uh, goodwill and interest. It looks personal of uh, uh, journalists like uh, the, the that who is that lady. <coughs> uh, otherwise, uh, just uh, just a moment ago, I was speaking with uh, one of the very known aviation journalists of uh, Ethiopian aviation journalist Kara Jesus, and I really asked him deep, saying that this defamation is right or wrong. In the first place, it looks a uh, fake news. But in the second place, the Ethiopian government has all the legal rights to charter an airline to do whatever emergency work, military included. I don't think there is a national or international law which forbids the Ethiopian government to do this. Uh, that, that was Kalei's remark. And uh, I have also uh, seen the same in the covering, covering where an aviation expert is uh, requested on the issue to explain and she was saying the American government based on emergency uses so many commercial airliners but on chartered military basis. That's the contract basis and this is a normal practice of government and anybody can do this and it's not a big deal and uh, government has been doing this for example during Malaysia Denawi. Uh, our government definitely used the airline for military transport. At that time, CNN has done nothing or whatever. So for me, it looks a personal thing with the a very wrong uh, journalist. Otherwise, I don't think this is a professional and uh, in the best interest of the CNN station itself. So how do you think this situation can be remedied? Any comments for the Ethiopian Airlines to maintain its track record and win this particular battle against the CNN? Uh, yeah, if you ask me my opinion, the Ethiopian government, the uh, Ethiopian Airlines definitely knows the international IATA and other aviation laws, and they operate in that principle, I know. Ethiopian Airlines is a very respected and very uh, giant business entity who knows what, what they are, they know what they are doing. So what I say is for this def defamation and uh, damage on their brand, I think they have to pursue legal advice and uh, push on maybe uh, suing CNN on a uh, known and credible courts. Otherwise, I mean, this can be a good case. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I'm sure they will pursue on that line. And I also, uh, see to, to, I also want to see that happen. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ercido Lendebo, for your insights. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ethiopian Airlines has signed code share and interline agreement with Access Rail to widen connectivity options for its passengers destined to Western Europe, United Kingdom, Scandinavia, Japan and Canada. The agreement avails Access Rail's wide rail destinations to passengers of Ethiopian Airlines through seamless connectivity with all journey segments contained on one single Ethiopian Airlines ticket. Ethiopian Airlines has further developed its air rail strategy by partnering with the world's leading provider of air rail intermodal solution, Access Rail. This new partnership provides Ethiopian Airlines with the ability to expand its network of destinations and to feed ET flights in both interline and code share format. The Ethiopian Coffee and Tea Authority stated that China continues to be among the top importers of Ethiopian coffee in August. The Chinese market is becoming a major destination for the nation's coffee exports, the authority said. 
Ethiopia's coffee and spices earnings reached 125 million US dollars from export of 33,160 tons of both commodities in August, although it plans to collect 99 million USD. Trade between China and Africa increased by 40.5% year on year in the first seven months of this year and was valued at a record high of 139.1 billion US dollars, according to figures from China's Ministry of commerce. Export of sesame seeds to China currently constitutes close to 70% of the Ethiopia's total export of the product in the global market. The African Union says it will extend and expand its military operations against Al-Qaeda-linked Islamists in Somalia to include other member states as its current mandate nears an end on December 31. Kazahunchani has more from